Hi everyone, I hope you had a very pleasant time over the Christmas holiday period and are looking forward to 2022. I know I certainly am. Now in my last video I did say that that was going to be the last one before the new year but I wanted to just uh, get one more in before the, the beginning of the new year. And I want to use this time to focus on a very good friend of mine um, and we've been doing this um, what makes this photo great or what makes this image great. I've done a few of those so far. But what I want to do is I want to actually start changing that into what makes this artist great. There's so many people out there who are pioneers, who are just doing incredible work and I want to showcase them. I want to introduce them to people who don't know them and I want to analyse some of their work uh, for the people who do know them to give my insights and the type of things that I see in their work that goes beyond mere photography and actually starts looking at personal development and creative expression, which is really what expressive photography is all about. In this video, I want to focus on Mark Adamus. Mark's a good friend of mine. We've uh, been away on a trip together in Tibet back in 2015. And during that time, I met a man who is uh, one of the most incredible characters I've ever met in my life. And I want to focus on his work because he's one of the most recognised photographers, uh, landscape photographers anyway, working today. He's spawned more uh, copiers than just about anybody else and he's inspired a whole generation of landscape photographers. Now I first got introduced to Mark back in about 2004 through the Nature Photographers Network, which I'm still a member of actually. Um, and Mark was part of a peer group of people like Alex Noriega and uh, Adam Gibbs and myself and we were all kind of emerging as landscape photographers. And Mark stood out right from the beginning. And if we look at Mark's work, the thing about it is, is it's so recognisable, it's so dynamic, it's so much, so larger than life. And what I want to do today is look at his kind of well-known style of work and kind of look at what that represents to Mark. And then some other photos that he's starting to show more of now, which I would consider to be more introverted and that are telling us about a different version of Mark Adamus. If we just dive into uh, Mark's website, markadamus.com, and go into his favourites gallery, and some of these photographs are really, um, I'll make that full screen, some of these photographs are, are getting on. I mean, th this is a photograph I remember from ages and ages ago, I mean like 15 years ago, and they really stand the test of time and they set the stage really for this type of photography. Super wide angle, incredible depth of field, high dynamic range, full on 100% technical photography. But we don't want to just focus on technique, we want to focus on what the photograph represents. And I think scenes like this are just all encompassing. It's about the whole thing, the big scene, the flowers, the trees, the light. It's about not isolating things, it's about showing everything or trying to encompass everything into the frame. Now, photographs like this take a huge amount of skill and I've sat with Mark as he's processed and spends 20, 24 hours on a photograph to make it look the way he wants it to look because he's having to tackle major uh, dynamic range problems, major focus problems, warping and distortion problems that are caused by the wide-angled lens. So Mark is a master of wide-angled landscape photography. He's widely recognised of one of the best people with it. Um, and all of these types of photos, um, and I'll find some more, all of these types of photos with these incredible foregrounds and majestic mountains and beautiful light and high dynamic range, they are celebrations of Mark's passion for the landscape. I know, having been to Tibet with Mark, I've never seen a man run around the mountains with such passion and vigour and enthusiasm, finding things, finding relationships, finding foregrounds, understanding how the light falls on the subjects, understanding depth and three-dimensionality, and then creating these really dramatic and and just unique photographs. 
And there's been a lot of talk about Mark, you know, with dropping in skies or dodging and burning or creating things that weren't really experienced. But at the end of the day, photography is more, it, it can encompass all facets of creativity. Um, and I think what's important is Mark was born out of the passion of Galen Raoul. Galen was someone who inspired me very much when I first started in my own landscape photography. He was an adventure photographer. He was a mountaineer. He was a rock climber. He was someone who used to spend all of his time in the mountains. And photography was a way to share and express that joy. Now, obviously, Galen was working within the limitations, typically of Fuji Velvia, because he died in early 2000, I think it was 2002 that Galen died. Um, so right through the 90s, 80s and 70s, he was shooting predominantly with an icon and Fuji Velvia. And he was his innovation using graduated neutral density filters that allowed a greater dynamic range to be uh, controlled by Velvia than typically had been used before. So that using technology to expand the creative palette of what we could express was something that Galen had worked very hard on for three decades. And what Mark has done during the 2000s, then to the noughties, and then into the 2010s, was to carry on with that tradition of pushing boundaries, expanding the human experience of expression through a medium that has limitations, dynamic range limitations, focus limitations, optical limitations, um, ways of uh, representing scale. All of these things are limitations of our medium. And what Mark has tried to do is push through those boundaries to create scenes that are experiential landscapes. So something like this is very much what Mark would have experienced. Because don't forget, when we look at the world, we see it at 50 millimeters. That is the relationship that we experience when we're there. We see the world at roughly 50 mil. And what Mark has done here is he's created a scene that feels as if the, the visual relationships are accurate. And I think that's an important thing to do, even if it involves a little bit of Photoshop or quite a lot of Photoshop to basically allow this to happen. These scenes have become synonymous with Mark. Celebrations of his love of the mountains, celebrations of his love of the wilderness, celebrations of his love of weather. And I think that's one of the great things about Mark is he's just fanatical about weather. And I'll show you one photograph that sums that up perfectly. Mark is a self-professed weather maniac and he's always on his laptop looking at weather systems, understanding where the weather is going to blow up and to do something remarkable and whether it's high winds or uh, potentially beautiful clouds or storms or lightning or auroras, uh, all of those natural phenomena that make landscape photography a very exciting and dynamic pastime. I remember watching a, a Galen Rowell video uh, or DVD in the early 2000s, the one he'd made with Franz Lanting, and he was running around like a maniac, chasing the light and all of these things. And he said, landscape photography is an adventure sport. It's an action sport. It's about energy and movement and dynamics. And that found that was a revelation to me because I'd always thought of landscape photography as a slow, stationary thing. Uh, obviously, large format film photographers tend to get rooted in a spot and wait for the light to develop. Whereas digital SLRs and mirrorless systems allow us to be much more dynamic and drive quickly to get somewhere or run or get into mountains or whatever to see the dynamic light uh, developing. This photograph's just remarkable. You know, the, the, this uh, spindrift snow flurry of this little uh, tornado is just absolutely fantastic. But what I want to focus on here and, and what I would do is I would urge you to visit Mark's site and understand that the photograph is a representation of the man. The big wide angle, dynamic, glor glorifying light, the majestic scenes are part of Mark's personality. He's a larger than life character. He's filled with a passion for life, the love of his wife and son, his passion for the environment, his passion for conservation, his passion for experiential living. I've never known anyone spend more time in the field than Mark. And his photographs are a celebration of that. But what I want to do is I want to highlight some photographs that I think are more introspective. 
I want to make special mention of this photograph. I remember this photograph from about 2005. It was one of the first photographs of Marks I ever saw and it had such a powerful impact on me. A simple black and white photograph of an incredible scene. This beautiful peak, the beautiful fluted snow. This is majestic landscape photography fine-tuned to an art form. Monochromatic stripped down to its bare elements. I remember speaking to Mark about this photograph and he was saying it's, it took him something like nine hours of hiking through deep chest, chest high snow to get to this location in incredible conditions and then have the energy and state of mind to, to still set up his camera and make the photograph. And again, I just think that's such a celebration of his passion for the landscape. You guys, have, you, you're obviously, you obviously realize I'm a big fan of Mark. And it's not about liking every photograph that he's ever made. It's about admiring his spirit and his willingness to show what he's passionate about. Uh, um, it's worth mentioning now, I've been running the uh, Expressive Photographers Forum since August there. There's about uh, a good hundred people now are subscribing on a monthly or annual basis. And a recurring theme is how can photographers be more like themselves? How can we be more passionate about our own work, our own life, our own development, our own style, our own preferences, our own aesthetics? All of these things that make us us, rather than trying to be somebody else. I know that I can't be Mark Adamus. I saw that in 29, uh, 2015 when we were in Tibet together. I couldn't keep up with his energy and I didn't have the passion for the processing that Mark has. So I stopped that style of photography and I did reach a point where I just thought, right, that's enough of that. I'm going to explore other, other avenues that are more me. And of course, when you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you can't wade through chest deep snow for five hours or whatever to get somewhere anymore. But what I do want to just highlight, and I did get slightly sidetracked there, was to find some photographs that are and if I go into his more recent work, I seem to recall there were some photos in here. It's just, it's just remarkable. I mean, looking through Mark's portfolio, these are just the photos in the last 12 months. And most people don't get this number of photographs in an entire lifetime of photography. Um, you know, this one's just caught my eye here. It's just, it's just remarkable. Um, it's just got everything. It's, it tells you everything you need to know about that event, the freezing cold, the, the silence, the quietness. Uh, the delicate light, the, 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 the empathy that he has for the scene, for the landscape. It's a view I've never seen before. I couldn't tell you whether it's in Alaska or in Patagonia or in, in the Arctic somewhere. I've got no idea where it is, but I don't need to. It's not about wanting to chase that scene or find that composition. I can sit and admire it to tell me that the world is a beautiful and amazing place and in this lifetime, I'm not going to see it all. I'm not going to experience it all. But there's someone out there who is. And that fills me with hope and passion and joy that there are people out there experiencing a world that I will never see. And it doesn't make me jealous, but it inspires me when I'm out in my local environment to notice and see things that other people may not notice and see, to engage and make photographs of things that fill me with peace and quietness and calmness. And that again is what the Expressive Photographers Forum is all about, is finding that sense of escape and peace through your creativity. I'll finish on this particular photograph here because it's unusually for Mark or, or what is considered unusual for Mark is using a telephoto lens. Again, when I was with Mark in Tibet, I used to see him with his 80 to 400 Nikon lens quite often zooming in to the mountains, clouds interacting with, uh, with glaciated ridges, fluted snow, the dynamics of weather around the mountaintop. And 
I like his long lens photography um, as much as I like his wide angle photography. And where the wide angle stuff shows the majesty of light interacting with a surface, usually with the, the light source in the frame, he shoots into the light a huge amount of time, which causes massive technical problems. Anyone who's ever tried shooting into the sun knows how difficult it can be to control uh, the frame. But in photographs like this, we're still feeling the light. We're still feeling the interaction of the light on the landscape. And what the one thing I talk about is the five triggers, luminosity, contrast, color, atmosphere, and geometry. And this photograph has them all. The luminosity of the fog and the yellow fall leaves, the contrast between the deep shadows where the sun is uh, getting uh, is hiding, uh, you know, the, the, the shadows of the pine trees there. We've got that beautiful contrast between the deep shadows and these beautiful highlights. And all of this hidden detail down in the bottom half of the frame there, where we can just see the light filtering over those pine trees there. So we've got luminosity and contrast, the color of the yellow foliage bursting out of the frame like fireworks. The geometry of all these angular lines caused by the, the sun interacting with those trees. And finally, this gorgeous atmosphere, all of that fog just rolling over the mountains here. So we've got the five triggers of engagement are just screaming at us in this photograph, but it still manages to be quite an understated scene. And I know Mark has his quieter times. He spends a lot of time in the landscape on his own and he can, he must witness these scenes and I can't stop myself from imagining him sitting there and just marveling at the beauty of nature and the constant, never-ending transformations and evolutions of light and contrast and colour and geometry and atmosphere. And some of these photographs are very transient moments. Each one represents just a time when Mark was just fully engaged in the landscape and he had that opportunity to push the shutter and immortalise it. You know, we've, we've, he's created something that will just last for generations here. A stunning representation of autumn and this the light interacting with the landscape. I would really urge you to spend some time on Mark's site with an open mind. It's very easy to judge and condemn someone who's pushing boundaries. This is something that happens a lot is we, we try and group ourselves in this ball in the middle where we all feel like we're doing roughly the same thing and no one gets overly criticized because we're all part of the pack. And it's the people who are the outliers, the people that are pushing boundaries, uh, trying to uh, look at the world through different eyes or use the tools in a different way that are often, often criticized. And I've, I know that Mark has had a lot of critiques over the years from people who think he does too much processing or he's inventing landscapes or whatever. But he is also an advocate for passion with the landscape. He's an advocate of being himself. And if you ever have the opportunity to speak to him, and you should check out the interview I did with Mark uh, quite a while ago now, but it was with one of the early Vision and Light interviews, where I have a very candid discussion with Mark and he talks very openly about his creativity. You, you, you only have to see the guy and speak to him to know that he has a deep and quiet passion for the landscape, but sometimes portrays himself equally as a very confident and very outspoken uh, creative person. So at the end of the day, we can creativity can be anything for us. It can be a quiet space or it can be a confident space. And I would strongly urge you also to check out the Expressive Photographers Forum and consider having a monthly or an annual subscription. It works out about 25-30% cheaper if you subscribe annually. Um, brilliant community, incredible discussions about creativity and individuality. And I know that the spirit of all creativity is about trying to make ourselves better people and to grow and develop and feel happier in our own skin. I think that's a pretty important message as we move into 2022.
I hope everyone has a wonderful and safe new year. I look forward to sharing more new content with you next week in, in 2022. Um, we're hoping to get out in the field on a bit more of a regular basis and share our local environment with you and the types of things that I can find a bit closer to home uh, and also doing a bit of traveling as well when it's safe for us to do so. Be well and safe, everyone. Check out Mark's site. Check out the Expressive Photographers Forum. Give us the old subscribe and thumbs up and all that jazz because it's, uh, well, we're trying to help grow education and landscape photography here on YouTube. I thank you, everyone, for what you've done for us in the last year with your support and buying our ebooks and videos. Um, and I hope that we in return have given you something of value to help you on your journey to be more creative and expressive. Thanks everyone. I'll stop talking now. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.